Have you been an affiliate in various niches, but have been nervous about dipping your toes into the iGaming side of the business? We're taking the guesswork out of breaking into the gambling affiliate business today by walking you through exactly how to get started, how to make money, and knowing what to look for in advertisers. I'm Michaela McNamara, editor of CAP, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. There's no better speaker to discuss this topic than David Mary of Castle Casino. An affiliate who has seen monumental success, Dave worked as an SEO consultant before managing his own network of high-traffic gambling portals for Wright Casino Media. He's going to share his knowledge of building over 30 gambling portals and impart real, concrete tips that you can take away to get your own business started. In addition to all of this, Dave will be covering how to make money by promoting gambling affiliate program, programs, what to look for when signing up to programs, how to get access to tools and resources to help you drive traffic, success stories and examples, U.S. market forecasts, and tactics you can use to make the leap into iGaming. Plus, for all of those attending the webinar today, Dave will be offering a free 30-minute private consultation for one lucky attendee following the webinar. The winner will be announced before the conclusion of today's webinar, so you'll definitely want to stay tuned during the duration of Dave's presentation. If you have any questions about any of the content presented today, as always, we will be providing an extended Q&A the last 20 minutes of the presentation. You're welcome to submit your questions throughout the webinar using the question panel in the GoToWebinar panel. Now I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is Affiliate Lounge. It's also Betson's affiliate program. Affiliate Lounge is the exclusive affiliate network for Betson Group and one of the most renowned iGaming affiliate programs in the business. Delivering lifetime revenue programs, Affiliate Lounge offers one of the most competitive revenue share programs in the industry, offering up to 50% commissions. Representing world-class iGaming brands such as Betson, Betsafe, Casino Euro, and Cherry Casino, not only do affiliates have the opportunity to promote top-performing campaigns, but with unique and attractive promotions, the opportunities to substantial earnings are endless. Visit the CAP directory and join Affiliate Lounge today. Now I'd like to formally introduce our guest speaker, Dave Mary. Dave spent the first part of his career in the link building strategy team at London-based search marketing company, Inland Search. He's now the marketing director at castlecasino.com and focuses the majority of his time on SEO and their affiliate program. You can learn more about Castle Casino's affiliate program at castleaffiliates.com. Aside from castlecasino.com, David founded and is still part of Ray Casino Media, who runs affiliate sites such as roulette.co.uk, liveroulette.co.uk, slots.co.uk, binaryoptions.co.uk, livecasino.co.uk, and many more. Okay, that's an impressive resume for such a young guy. Welcome to the webinar and thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for the introduction, okay. Michaela. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. I'm going to pass everything off to you now. Okay, excellent. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with uh, for people just getting started is what is a gambling affiliate program? Um, as it says, a gambling affiliate program is the link between yourself and the gambling operator, providing you with revenue for the players that you send them. So effectively, you're making money whenever the casino makes money. Okay, so the first step which we want to go through is how it actually works. Um, how do you actually get the revenue for the players that you send? Um, so, step number one, you'll have a guy at home sitting, um, wondering where he's going to play his next casino games. He'll perhaps remember an advertisement he received via an email, um, he'll check social networking sites, or in most cases he'll visit a search engine and type in a query. Step two, through his searches and, and memory, hopefully he'll find your website. Your website will then guide him to one of the casinos which you promote. And step three, the player joins the casino which you promote and becomes a member. Now for step four, you have to let nature take its course. The player will deposit and in most cases lose money at the casino which you promote. Consequently, and this is my favorite part, you'll earn money through the player losses which you'll be able to check out through your affiliate revenue portal. So it's that simple. You simply need to act as the link between the player and the casino and hopefully you'll earn a sizable chunk of the revenue. Okay, so why get into the gambling affiliate niche? Uh, I want to show you why 
it's so lucrative and why it's so hotly sought after by many people. The, the first thing I always say is there's no tangible product and therefore the profit margin is high. Um, I'll give you an example of this um, using another industry. If you're buying a television online for £500, the, the seller may actually only make a £100 profit on that uh, because they've purchased the TV for £400 initially. However, if a casino makes £500, they don't have a physical product to purchase and therefore they have a lot less outgoing costs. They may actually count £400 of that as profit, meaning that they get lucrative revenues as shown. Okay, because there is a high profit margin, the revenue share percentage is also extremely high. Um, as an example, and I'm not actively involved with this industry, however, from what others tell me, you'll struggle to find a retail affiliate revenue share, which is above, say, 10%. Whereas in the casino industry, however, you'll, you'll struggle to get lower than 25%, and you can go up to 50% quite easily. Um, I've seen programs offering 70% in some cases. Now, this is my favorite thing about the casino industry, which is the accumulative revenue available. Um, you have to remember that a lot of casino players will always continue to play. For example, in month one of being an affiliate, you could send 10 players and earn 1,000 pounds. In month two, you could send another 10 players. However, five of the players from the previous month will continue to play, in total earning you 1,500 pounds. Uh, this continues on and on and on. Um, I see affiliates still earning from players they sent nearly two years ago. I think that the, the bottom line here is that if you choose a good casino, then you could be earning from work you did years ago as well as the present. Okay, so this slide will cover what many people say when I suggest getting into the online gambling industry. Uh, the general consensus is that it's too saturated. People say that you can't do it without being an expert or having any funding behind you, sorry. Um, I'll always say the same thing, which is find a niche. So why find a niche in the gambling industry? The, the simple answer is that it will be a lot easier to stand out. If you're going after the same players as tens of thousands of other websites, then you're fighting a battle that you may not be able to win easily. However, if you go after a smaller section of those players, then you'll be able to target them a lot better and also have less competition to deal with. Uh, effectively, you'll end up in a smaller room and therefore have a higher chance of grabbing what you actually want. Uh, the question which people always ask me after that is, does that mean less money? Um, my answer to that is always the same again. It's no. Um, it would mean less money if you're getting a, a massive piece of the bigger pie, but the likelihood is you'll struggle to have any of that. Uh, this will allow you to have a larger piece of a smaller pie, equating to a lot more than you'd have if you went general without targeting a niche. So put this into a, an active example. Uh, the keyword casino is searched 27,100 times a month in the UK alone, but the likelihood is you'll only be able to grab a 0.5% market share of that, if that. Um, and that means from search engines you'll get 135 visitors per month. However, Live Casino is searched 2,400 times per month in the UK. But you have a 10% market share because there's less competition. It's easier to stand out. Uh, you'll be getting 240 visitors per month. Um, those examples are perfectly plausible. I've, I've lived them myself. Um, it's, it's a fact that it'll be a lot easier to target Live Casino over Casino. Now, the next point is your content will always be more targeted. You'll know what they want and you'll know what to give them. Um, people visiting your site searching for anything, so they've been searching casino, sorry, could be looking for anything. They could be, of course, searching to play at a casino, but they could want to find the casino down the road. They could want to find an image. They could be completing their, their homework. Um, they could be one in a hundred things that they'd actually want. Therefore, you'll, you'll always struggle to, to give the small amount of people that you do get on your site for that keyword something which will convert. Whereas Live Casino, which I actually run a site with with a delightful chap called Anthony, um, they're, they're probably only looking for one out of ten things. The likelihood is that they're, they're looking for more information on a specific type of casino, a, a live dealer casino. Therefore, we know exactly what to give them, which is live casinos. Uh, they're not searching for the casino on the road. They're not searching for images. It's a, it's a more targeted term. Okay. So actually finding a niche, which is the, the, the thing which people most struggle with. Um, unfortunately, I can't walk you directly into a niche with direct suggestions. However, I can guide you with some ideas which should push you in the right direction. So the first section I want to look at is different casino games. There are scores of things that you can do and various variants of each. Um, roulette, blackjack, 
Baccarat slots. Uh, you can break these down months, multiple times once again. There's, there's hundreds of slot games. There's European Roulette. There's Early Power Blackjack. Uh, you can do it hundreds of times. Um, in general, if people enjoy playing a game in a real casino, there'll be a market for online as well. Uh, the next thing I look at is the different requirements, and you can piece these together with the with the first suggestion as well. So, people people looking for bonuses, software, payment methods, uh, they're all searching. Uh, they're all the markets on their own, and they have the potential to send hundreds of players every single month. Um, I'd also like to make the point that it doesn't need to be a gambling site specifically to target gamblers, providing you have the right visitor demographics. For example, if you're searching for a site which, if, sorry, if you have a site that specifically targets young men, then you could be perfect for a sports betting affiliate. If you're a site that entertains a female readership, then you could include a bit of bingo about them. Uh, this doesn't have to be a major part of your site. It doesn't have to be the sole focus, but you only need an advertisement to the right person to be able to convert. Lastly, look beyond the, beyond the very obvious location that you're in and focus on another area. Just because you're in the UK, it doesn't mean that you can't find a niche in Australia. And just because you're in Australia, it doesn't mean you can't find a niche in South America. Uh, think outside the box and don't just think on your own doorstep. Um, I think this section in general is just about not limiting your mind. Okay, and um, whilst on the subject of markets, I wanted to talk to you about the, the hotly sought up at US market. Um, at the moment, online gambling is currently illegal in the USA. Uh, I've sadly never been in the industry while it was legal. However, one day I'd like to, uh, because it, at the time it was the largest market in the world was shut down. Uh, there are plenty of reasons for this. Um, some say it's to protect the American citizens and those who are underage. However, it's more commonly accepted that it's because the government are worried that it will distract people from land-based casinos. Um, naturally, if people stop going to these casinos, then the government would stop receiving the tax revenues from them, uh, which instead could be going to foreign casinos, as most most of the online casinos are located in countries with more relaxed regulations like Gibraltar and Antigua. Um, as an update for the current situation, regulatory laws are being discussed by the Senate at the moment, uh, which should allow it to be legalized on their own terms at some point. However, I personally wouldn't expect to hit any news until 2013. Okay, um, the last quick point I wanted to give you about niches is a good way to discover how big a niche is and the potential market that you could target. Um, naturally, you could come up with any of the variants which I suggested in a few slides ago. However, you need to know that people are searching for it in order to be able to get players from it. Um, there's plenty of ways to do this, however, one tool I really recommend is the Google Keyword tool. Um, if you enter a query into this, ensuring that you have the exact ticked on the left, left side hand left hand side, sorry, rather than broad, then you'll be able to find out how many times it's searched every month, anywhere in the whole world. If people are searching for it, then there's the demand. If people aren't, then there most likely isn't. It's it's very simple and it's how you can get stats on to, to gauge how big a market is, it's what I used a few slides ago to know that casino is searched 27,100 times in the UK. Um, I have given the URL to this below, and if anyone has specific questions regarding it, you could of course just ask me directly at the end when there'll be some question time. Okay, and the next point is what to look for when signing up to gambling affiliate programs. What, 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 what decisions should you make? Um, there's no set formula when it comes to finding a good affiliate program. Nearly everyone I've ever promoted has said pros and cons. Um, some you'll find out right away and others only a year down the line. I think the important word here, which, which, which I look for all the time, is research. Um, when searching for an affiliate program, do your research in advance and don't do it six months down the line. Um, the first step I'll always take is doing my research on the casino. The first thing I'll do is try out all the casinos before anything else. Sign up, test the games, ask yourself if you've enjoyed doing it. Um, even if you're not a gambler, most people can tell the difference between a well put together game and a complete shambles. Um, the next thing I'll do is give the support a try. It's a massive part of the casino industry. If you're, you're spending your hard earned pounds, you want to know that there's someone on the other end to help you. Um, you want to know that you can ask people about your payout. You want to know that you can ask questions about the game. Um, Always remember that even if the program's offering you 75% of a revenue share deal, 
none of it ever matters if the player doesn't like the offering and the support that you're giving them. Uh, you've got to be honest with yourself and make sure that you promote the good guys. Uh, I've got an example of this. I've been very close to promoting a program before after being contacted by the affiliate manager once. Um, although everything seemed very good on the surface, their terms and conditions were fine. Uh, I thought I'd try out the casino. And when I did, one of the games wouldn't function properly. It kept freezing in the bonus round. Um, so I, I emailed support and I was, I was asking the questions, why is this happening? Why am I not getting the, the money which I should be getting? Uh, and I didn't receive a response for 10 days. Uh, if I was a player who was depositing my hard-earned money, I'd never, ever go back there. Therefore, no matter what revenue share they offered me, it, it would be useless because they wouldn't spend their money. Uh, the last thing I do is always Google the brand and look around the forums. Even places like Cap for, for the actual casino brands, they have indications for their, their general ethics. Um, you have to remember that players do this research as well. So if, if they're doing it and you're not, then, then you're missing out. You're promoting the wrong guys. So if you've found the casino, the next thing to do is look at the affiliate program. Um, you need to find out what they can do to incentivize you to, to promote them. Uh, the first thing you should do is always look at the terms and conditions. Most of us aren't legal experts, so you're going to have to rely on the basics when it comes to this. Just check they have no nasty hidden terms. Um, some programs add negative carryover without showing it elsewhere on the site. Some casinos will add the most ridiculous things that you would really want to know in advance. Um, a very big casino not too long ago actually um, put in their terms that they have the right to terminate your account and pay no revenue at any time if you mention the casino name on your website. Um, I'm not sure who fought that one up, but it certainly counteracted the point of promoting them, and I'm very glad that I found out before I did. Um, the next thing I'll do is check out the, sorry, I'll check out the forums. Um, if the program has been around for a while, places like CAP and um, a few other prominent affiliate portal forums, uh, they'll, they'll all have information on them. You'll be able to, if there's been a problem in the past, it will be there. Just check them out. It's worth five minutes of your time, rather than finding it out down the line. Um, the next thing is the casino. Uh, sorry, the commission structure. Um, if they pass the above and no major flaws have been discovered, then check out the deals they can offer you, whether that be a CPA or a revenue share deal. I'll give you a quick overview of these. CPA offers you a quick one-time payment for the player that you send, whereas revenue share will offer you a percentage of their revenue over the whole player lifetime. It's widely accepted even between affiliate managers and affiliates alike, um, the revenue share works out a lot more profitable over a long period of time. It just means that you may have to wait a bit longer for your money. It's, it's something which I've, I've always worked on revenue share. I've switched to CPA a few times. However, it's, it's not worth it. Um, there's one minute you're sitting there and you've got £10 in your affiliate account. The next minute the player loses £5,000. Uh, you can be earning thousands in minutes for this, this way. Uh, remember, it's once again, as I said, with researching the casino, it's not all about the revenue share percentage. The casino can offer you 30% and be twice as good as the competition that offers you 50%. Uh, you need to know who is going to be retaining the gamblers in the long run, and they're the ones you should always go for. The next thing I'll do is sign up to the affiliate program and actually test the creatives. Once again, it's totally pointless if they have the best casino in the world. However, they, um, if they're the, the best casino in the world. However, they have, sorry, they have rubbish creatives. So if the player, if the creators aren't enticing people to, to click through, then, then it's no point. And the last thing is Stats Remote. Uh, this is a bit of software they use to track affiliate earnings. Say you have 30 affiliate accounts, it's very impractical to log in every morning and analyze your stats. The tool aggregates it all into one place and provides you with everything you need by simply opening a program. It's very simple and it saves me hours and hours and hours per week. Uh, this only costs thirty pounds, thirty dollars per month. Sorry. Um, however, I believe it's well worth the cost. It saves so much time. You can actually get that for free if you promote Castle Casino as well. Uh, thought I'd put a bit of shameless self promotion out there. And the, the very last thing on this slide is just re-emphasizing the point: test it. Test absolutely everything when it comes to them. Um, and one thing, the final test you should do is always test that the tracking links work. It's worth spending £20 to making sure you're getting the commission and that it's all working properly rather than finding out six months down the line when you could have lost out on thousands. Okay, now I'm assuming that you know how to build a website. Um, 
So these are things that I'll always consider when specifically launching a site in the casino industry. They do relate to other affiliate niches. However, this is, this is what I look at. The first thing is, is making sure it's targeted to the niche which you've found. There's no point spending days figuring out the right niche for you to be involved in if you can't utilize the opportunity with everything, with, with content for that niche, sorry. Um, make sure that your content, the casinos you promote, the design, absolutely everything caters and targets for that niche. Uh, otherwise the players will arrive at your site and leave and go somewhere else. The next thing I'll ask is, is the design user friendly? And I'll explain what I mean by that. One of the, the biggest gripes I have with casino websites is the lack of call to actions. Uh, I visited some websites and had to look for five to six seconds before I can figure out how to navigate to an actual casino. Don't force it on people, however it should be in front of them. You should make sure there's buttons, you should make sure that the relevant information is there for when they do want to sign up. The next thing is, does it come across spammy? Uh, a massive problem with the gambling industry as a whole is that it's tainted with a bad reputation for spam. People receive emails daily with offers they don't want, people get spammed with pop-unders and everything else you could possibly imagine. Think of it, they've done it. Um, due to this, they have a very short tolerance with spam nowadays. If you're putting flashing, flashing banners on your site, pop-unders and little messages which try and stop you clicking it off, people don't appreciate it and they won't come back. It's, it's not a good tactic in the long term, in my opinion. The next is logical structure. Once again, it's another pet hate of mine. I, I work online, it's my business and I have done every day for as long as I can remember. So if I personally struggle to navigate a website, then I think to myself, how would my, my dad do so if he wanted to have a flutter? You've got to cater for people who, who are, maybe aren't as intelligent as you. Um, go to your site, create it simply, and visualize everything that a user would possibly want to do when they get to your site. And make sure that everything's easily acceptable. Uh, there is a, a rule which designers call the, I think it's called the rule of three. Um, and what this means is that everything should be accessible within three clicks of the home page. So make sure that if someone wants to find a certain piece of content, they're not clicking 10 times and going through different doorways. And the next thing is ask for third party opinions. Building the website yourself and you become engrossed in the design and you become blinded to it almost. You become too used to it. So what I often do is I'll get a friend and that's not someone in the office, that's someone totally separate and I'll get him over to the laptop and I'll ask him to find that information about one of the casinos and register for one of them. Uh, you just watch where his mouse is drawn to, see if he comes up with any complications and you'll be surprised what they come up with. Although it may not seem obvious to you, it's, it's, obvious, to you. it's obvious to them. Uh, as an example, I had a friend called Luke who came to the office and I did this to him. He straight away asked me why I should sign up to one brand over the other. And it made sense because why would anyone want to read 30 minutes of review if they're just looking for a quick overview? And that's why we have tables on our websites now. Um, beforehand, that wasn't there. So the, the bottom line is just make sure you cater for everyone here. Okay. And as you can see below, I've given some links once again. Uh, I would like to talk about this type of thing for much, much longer. Um, however, due to the time restraints I have, I've given links to sources which I feel are relevant and which I feel would really help you out. I follow these type of sites daily. And a lot of them, like CAP, the designers forum, you can talk to people. People do this for a living. Okay. Now the task is to actually get the person who is looking to gamble to your website. Uh, once again, I could talk about this for days. It's, it's what I've grown up in. Um, but sadly, this isn't a marketing webinar. So I have to cut it short and just do an overview of what you can look into. Um, what I am going to do is encourage you once again, if you have any specific questions, ask me at the end about this. Um, the first thing I'll go quickly over is SEO, which is naturally an acronym for Search Engine Optimization. This is the process of improving the visibility of a website or a web page in search engines listings. And now I'm sure none of you will argue the importance of these. However, in case you do, I've thrown in a little stat um, I'm not sure how relevant it is anymore, but I learned it years ago when I was working for a search engine marketing agency. Um, but it's estimated that 99% of user journeys where, where someone's looking for something new starts online with a search engine. So it's something you should especially consider as an affiliate. Uh, once again, I've posted a few links below. Um, one to CAP, who have a search engine optimization section, which I've written for several times, um, and SEO Moz, which I'm a member of. It's 
they're, they're, they're resources which you should be following up with and they'll keep you ahead of the game. The next is social. Um, as I've said there, it's estimated that around 40% of the world's internet users are on Facebook alone. So you need to make sure that they, you appear on these sites and that you actively promote yourself to them. Once again, I've added some links below to a link, sorry, to the top resource, which which I feel will give you information on how to better target this. And below, I've, I've written a few more kind of generic generic marketing tactics which you could use and which you can look into: email marketing, PPC, video marketing, traditional offline marketing. Uh, I'd love to be able to go into all of them. However, just Google them, and you'll you'll come up with ways which I use and scores of other successful affiliates used to be able to promote their sites and once again there's sections for all of these on cap you'll be able to find that information if you need to now i'm of course going to what, what, what sorry what i did want to do is go into specifics within these areas which actually affect you when you're in the gambling industry now, i'm of course assuming that you already know about spit search engines and social um however if you don't and you learn about these after please consider these points. And I'll kick it off with search engines. So the problems. Um, due to the quick returns which are available, because players can lose thousands in, in hours, there's a lot more spam. Uh, it's, it's quite commonly known that I think it's probably the second most spammed industry on the internet. Secondly, links are more expensive due to the shortage. No one wants to link to a gambling site because it, it reflects them badly. It could be a family oriented site, People believe that it's negative for your SEO. So because of the shortage, they're more expensive. And this ties in with point one as well because it creates the spam. Uh, people can't afford the link, so they'd rather spam and get it for free. Now I want to talk about the solutions to these and how you can get around it. The first one is pretty simple, and you just have to be able to control yourself and resist. Remember to play the long-term game and, and don't give in to spam even though it may, may seem that you're, you're way behind everyone else. I've watched scores of affiliates get sucked into the short-term game and most of them aren't around anymore. If they are, they've, they've spent years recovering from the actions which they take. Don't spam, no matter how much it seems it might be working for some people because it's a fact that it doesn't last. Also, when it comes to link building, think outside the box. Uh, there are plenty of quality websites that aren't solely gambling related that will link to you with just a little bit of effort. For example, write a news piece on some industry events and press release it. Write a good article about the probability in roulette and get some articles submitted to, to probability websites or article submission sites. Uh, there's hundreds of things you can do which aren't necessarily gambling related but they'll link to you because of it and they'll be high authority websites. Uh, you could even blog or speak on sites like CAP and you'll get links back. It's, it's not very hard if you're willing to put a bit of work into it and don't go for the short term. All right, and on the next slide, we cover social. So the problems with this, most people view gambling as a totally taboo subject. And even if they don't, there's a strong chance that they'll worry what their friends or family will think if they do like or follow a casino page. Um, even me personally, I don't even like sharing or re-promoting statuses on my own pages because I have younger siblings. I, I don't want them to see them. Um, on top of this, they've most likely lost money because of it. So why would they want to actively engage in it again? So the solutions to this. The first one is give them an incentive. Don't just throw a page up and expect them to like it because that's proven that it doesn't work. It's already hard enough when you are incentivizing them. Um, you've got to think outside the box. Design a page that when it's like they'll get a, a £10 bonus at Carlos Casino, or when they like it, they'll be entered into a competition to win an iPhone 5. A lot of these things are quite easily obtainable. Most of them you can actually get from operators themselves and not have to spend a penny yourself. Uh, just think outside the box and give them something in return. The second tip I have for social gaming is not to spam. As I mentioned earlier, people have a low sensitivity threshold when it comes to gambling. Don't hit people with an auto bot posting the same offer 10 times a day. I've liked casino pages and then I've instantly unliked them because of them because it's, it's just frustrating. Put thought into your posts, provide less updates and more quality.
Right. And the next thing I wanted to do is look at some success stories and examples of people who I think have done very well. Um, I'm going to start with a site from a third party and then also go on to one of our sites. Um, the first thing which, well, firstly, sorry, I should say, this is Low Risk Winner, which was started in 2010 by a friend of mine called Ryan. Um, the first thing you'll notice about the site is the niche itself. Rather than trying to target just gamblers in general and promoting everyone, he's looked at people who wish to play place bets which have a low risk, whether that be to just, just small bet amounts or people, or, or sorry, because they have good odds. Um, it's a specific niche within the industry. It's targeting, targeting a core of people. The second thing you'll notice about the website is that it looks very clean. It doesn't appear to be spamming anyone. It's got the filled with content. However, when you actually look at it, you'll realize that in, in four or five different sections, there's advertising everywhere. He's, he's done it very well. He's, he's, he's made the page look non-spammy, but if you wanted to find an operator, you'd never have to move your mouse more than five centimeters. The last thing I point out is, once again, the very, very clear navigational structure. You're not getting lost on this website at any point. The navigation is clear, separated at the top. There's, there's no confusion, and everywhere links to where it says it goes. One thing I hate about gambling sites in particular is that you'll click on a link saying casino reviews, and it will just forward you to a casino, or it will come up with a, a pop-up. You know, it's, it's simple. It says what it does, and it will do what it says. Okay, and another site, which is owned by Right Casino Media, um, is Live Roulette, which was started at the end of 2008. Um, I think it was actually more 2009 uh, where it actually started to have a, a decent website on it. Um, once again, the first thing I'll point out is that it's a niche again, Live Roulette. It's not gambling in general. It's not even casino in general. It's a game within the casino, but then it's broken down even further. It's that game with live dealers. It's a fully broken down niche and you can break it down again. You can do live roulette bonuses. We, we do them. Um, it's drilled down, and anyone arriving on this site, they're only looking for one thing, and that's live roulette. And that's why it has such high conversion rates. Um, I, I don't mind sharing that, for example, we, we also own roulette.co.uk, which, which obviously receives more traffic than live roulette. However, the conversion rates are a lot, a lot lower. Uh, typically, 10% of people who come to this site will often end up at a casino. Once again, it's, there's, there's, there's no spammy. There's no forcing people to click. There's advertisements there for anyone who wants to do anything. However, we're not making it the be-all and end-all of the site. Um, they can read information. They can play now. They can go to one of the side buttons. They can go through all the content. It's, it's simple, and it's done well. And once again, there's, there's a very clear navigational structure. It's, you, you'll go to the page which you want to go to. We, we put a lot of thought into what players might want after they've come to the homepage rather than simply just advertisement, advertisement, advertisement. Um, you've got to treat, treat players as in you've got to assume that they want more information. You've got to assume that you're, you're dealing with a, a fresh 18-year-old who knows nothing about gambling that's never been in the casino in their life. Just cater for everyone and, and everyone will leave happy. Now, Cap actually asked me to include some stats on the site to show how being in a small niche can actually pay off. Uh, as you can see, the, the site is four, year, four years old, sorry. It gets around 2,500 visitors per month, and the average revenue is, is 10,000 plus per month, quite comfortably. Um, so you don't have to be in a massive niche to make a lot of revenue through gambling. Okay, so now we'll get to the, the last slide where I'd like to show everyone how everything connects together to create the bigger picture. Uh, to do that, I'm going to refer to the images in the chain that I pasted on the, the first slide and, and talk about each one. So firstly, you have the guy who is looking to play at the casino. Providing you, you follow what I believe to be the best steps to get into the industry, he'll be your niche. Your, your sole job will be identifying who he is and then providing the marketing, whether that be social, SEO, mailers, to, to connect, connect that guy to your affiliate site. You've got, to, you've got to know who you're targeting in order to be able to get them. Okay, getting, to the, getting the person to the site is the second step. However, before you can accomplish this, you'll need to get a website in the gambling industry in the first place. 
remember my top tips for this is just keep it clean, keep it easily navigated and non-spammy. You'll, you'll look around and you'll see sites which are complicated, which spam, which do everything under the book. Just resist it and in the long term it will pay off because people will come back as well. People will want to be associated with your site rather than the one which might be ahead of you in the search engines at the moment, but it annoys them. And once again, this goes back to remembering your niche and choosing a good casino. Once a visit is actually on your website, they'll be greeted by one of the operators that you chose to promote. Um, choose the casino who, who will suit number one and not just suit you. Make sure that you think about your target market in advance. Think about what he'll want because if it's not what he wants, no matter what they offer you, it's not going to pay off. So you've connected the player with exactly what they're looking for. Now you've just got to let nature take its course. And because you've done your job so well, they've met exactly what they wanted. They'll, they'll deposit money and most likely they'll lose it. And once again, my favorite task is just logging into your affiliate portal and checking how much you've earned. Uh, it's, it's a roller coaster when you're doing this. You can wake up one morning and have 10 players, but you've only earned 100 pounds. You can make up the next morning and have one player who's earned you 15,000 um, pounds. It's unlike other industries. It, it's very lucrative, and I'd recommend it for anyone. Okay, and I believe that's about it. Great. Dave, thank you so much for explaining everything. Soup to nuts. I think you did a great job of walking everyone through from the get-go to how they can start profiting. Um, we'll move into the Q&A section, but before we move on, I just wanted to remind everyone that I'll be announcing the winner of the 30-minute consultation with Dave following the Q&A. So please stick around. So in case you're one of the winners, or you are the winner, I should say. So I had some great questions come in, and I'll get started. Um, See, this one comes from Phil. What are the new emerging areas of online gambling, such as in play, live casino, live odds, etc.? Um, I don't know. I think uh, a lot of these markets have been emerging for years. I've I've seen markets which, when I when I go to the conferences, uh, when when I started to go four years ago, they said it was emerging, and when I went this year, they're still saying it's emerging. Um, so you've got to be careful on what actually is happening and what people are just trying to create a buzz around. Um, I'd personally say that at the moment one thing which actually is taking off due to new technologies is, is mobile. Um, that's been something which has been overhyped for years, but the, with, with new technologies developing, it's becoming possible as an affiliate to get into it. Uh, I still think there's space in live gaming. However, naturally, I'm, I'm in that niche, so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and apart from that, I'd, I'd say just... The international markets are quite bare at the moment. Um, places like Italy, places like France, there's a lot of regulation changes over there which uh, are knocking a lot of operators out and there's more space for affiliates to, to target the right people who are still there. Great. Um, I've had a couple of questions come in regarding the U.S. Um, I know you're based in the U.K., but yeah. um, hopefully you can help answer these questions. One of them is, as a U.S. resident, should I host my gaming site on an overseas server? Um, as you said, Mikado, I'm primarily uh, UK-based, so I'm by no means an authority on this. However, from what I know, there's, I, I probably would host it on an international server just because I'd like to be safe. However, from what I know, there's no regulations which prevent that right at this moment. Um, it's not uh, illegal to be a gambling affiliate in the US. It's not even illegal for the players to play at a casino. Um, it's illegal for the actual casino to, to accept the players. Um, once again, I, I'm not an authority on that. This is going on what I know. But I, I, in, in answer to the question, I'd, I'd probably host it externally just to be secure. Okay, great. What are your thoughts on the new Google disavow tool? Uh, questions from Paul. Um, well, I was actually looking at this um, just the other day, and I didn't get too much into it. However, one of my partners was telling me that we should never use it. Um, I can't remember exactly why. However, I think you're you're giving Google too much information. Um, I wouldn't be able to answer that with any authority, to be honest. 
Uh, I personally, I'd rather email the webmaster and tell them to remove the link um, than actually give Google more information. Okay, thank you. Um, this question is from someone who's new to the industry. Is affiliate marketing and iGaming too competitive? Isn't this market already saturated? Um, it is competitive. It's extremely competitive. It's anything which has a lot of money in it is. However, if you're willing to take on the market and you're willing to invest time into it, it's not impossible. Anyone can do it. Uh, I know people, even even my younger brother who, who started up a site a year ago, and um, he's he's already making good money from it. It's all about finding an area within it which isn't overly competitive and targeting that. Great. Um, this is another question from Phil. One of the biggest challenges I found so far is that Google requires a gambling certificate from affiliates before allowing PPC. How do I get around this? I'm sorry, Michaela, can you repeat that, please? I've got a bit of distortion. Sure, sure. One big challenge I found so far is that Google requires a gambling certificate from affiliates before allowing PPC. How do I mm. get around this? Um, well, that's quite an interesting question. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've actually managed to, to, to get through that. Um, I can tell him how I did it. I'm not sure whether this is the formal way. Um, we put in a request directly with the, um, kind of the gambling manager, uh, Google headquarters in, in Ireland and actually spoke to him and said, how can we do this? And he told us to sign, um, I think it's an affidavit, which basically, uh, removes liability from Google and says that we're going to do exactly what they say. To him. As soon as we'd signed that and sent it back to him, we we were allowed to do what we want and we were allowed to go via PPC. Uh, actually working with PPC via, as an affiliate is the hard task. Um, it's you're, you're competing against all the operators. Uh, so you've got to be, you've got to have skills. Otherwise you can quite easily lose out on quite a bit of money. Great. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Brian, uh, and I know, David, you did touch on this, but maybe you could just sum it up. Can sure. you speak about traffic sources, and where exactly would you start? Um, sorry, are you, are you talking about marketing as in players directly to your website? I'm, I'm going assuming to assume, is. yes, I'm going to yeah. assume, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I'm probably... I've probably got a preference towards this because I worked in it before. However, in regards to traffic sources, I'll, I'll always start with search engines. Um, it's it's not only kind of the most effective marketing tool, but it's, it's also the most long term. Uh, you can buy ads, you can do everything else. However, I always find that there are there are nice additions to what you can get from search engines, um, providing you've got the right website, providing you, you target it well and you target your niche uh, within. A year's time of hard work and actually doing some good link building. There's there's not many people that you can't beat, uh, and once you do, the, the rewards are massive. Great. Um, I'm having a lot of questions come in about PPC. Okay. Um, what are other good PPC programs for iGaming affiliates besides Google AdWords? Do you have experience on Roar.com? On on what.com? Sorry. Roar, O R O A R dot com. Ah, I, I've heard of it. I, I personally don't have any experience. Um, I've I've not personally used Roar. I, I did actually look at it a few weeks back, and I I added it to my calendar to have a look. The the ones which I've had experience with, I've had experience with the other major search engines, such as um, Yahoo and Bing, and also a little bit with with Ask. Um, however. In regards to kind of like PPC and, and pay-per-click advertisements, I've also investigated stuff like pop-unders as an affiliate, um, which you'll notice a lot of the operators do. But that type of thing, I've used people like ClickSaw and Bibvertiser. It's it's a hard thing to get into, and uh, it's probably, as, a, as an extra tip, it's probably the only time I'll ever recommend someone goes with CPA rather than revenue share. Um, if you're paying, say, 10 pence per click, you need to know exactly how much you're getting through for that player. If the player doesn't lose any money and you've already paid for the click, then you're, you're losing out. Um, 
it's it's the only time I ever work on CPO other than River Chef. Uh, that's the best I can give them. Okay, uh, another PPC question. Can you use PPC on a second tier search engine? Is it profitable? No, um, I, I personally don't think so. I think it's it's hard enough to 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 do it in a, on a first tier search engine, let alone it second tier. Um, as an affiliate with PVC, you, you're you're competing against the likes of William Hill, Thirty Two Red, the actually huge operators. Um, I I know that once uh, once upon a time I actually looked at the PPC for live roulette, and uh, I think it was something insane like. Forty-five pounds per click, um, and you you can't do that when you're only receiving a percentage of the revenue, or you're only getting a small CPA, unless you've got absolutely extreme conversion rates. Uh, there's some people who do it very well. Um, I think it's top ten online casinos that Cody Cow, something similar. Um, if you, if you are doing that type of thing, you've you've got to have your site tuned perfectly. You've got to be able to target exactly what they're looking for because if they don't convert. You can lose out on quite big money. Uh, it's a massive investment. You can't get into that type of thing with a hundred pounds because you'll you'll just lose it. You've got to have a few thousand pounds to even touch the water. Okay. Thank you. Our next question is from Shane. Have you had any of your sites slapped by Google Penguin updates? <laughs> if so, what have you done to recover from it? Um, yes, I have, and uh, I also partner with a, a guy, Anthony, who's listening in. Who's his, his slight's been uh, slapped by Penguin, and I've been trying to help him today. Um, it's I, I'd say about forty percent of our network, which were were, were actually hit. Um, and what we did, I, I took a number of steps. The the first thing was clear up all the the, the potential dirty backlinks, the links which. Google might question, even if there was a, a little bit of kind of maybe they mill, maybe they won't, I don't think one link is worth a potential ban. So I, I cleaned all of them up. Um, the second thing I did was I looked at all the content and I kind of, I tried to work out, is this content there for, for, for Google or is that there because it's actually good for the user? I kind of optimized it to, to actually do what it's meant to do a lot better. Um, I don't think stuff like keyword spamming and, and stuff like that works anymore. Uh, another thing which I noticed that we've been using the same writers for several different pages and several different sites. And because of that, we thought maybe Google's viewing these as, why, why would I rank both of these in the same kind of industry when one of them's already giving the, the answer? Um, I essentially tried to separate every single site we had and make it look like it's standalone. Even if we are working on the same site at the same time, it's got a different writer, it's got a different server. Um, I'd say that around 80% of our sites have recovered now. Um, we have a few which we're still working on which seem to be very, very painful. Um, but I think providing you're not dirty, providing you don't spam, uh, the majority of people were, were all right with Penguin and it, if they weren't, they recovered quite quickly. Okay. I have so many great questions coming in. Uh, this one is from Eric. How much do I need to budget to get started on a gambling affiliate site or a network of sites, both time and money? Interesting. Um, well, I, I personally, it, this, this all depends on, on the opportunity which arises and how hard you put yourself forward to it. Um, I, I personally got started with about 500 pounds uh, when I was working at a company and I just, I found the right domain and I purchased it for that amount. Uh, from that, I spent all the time building it, acquiring free links. If you want to go really budget, you can, you can do it. You've just got to look into the, the right niche and you need to build yourself up. If you, if you find a niche which you can spend, which you can buy a domain for 50 pounds in and it will earn you a few hundred pounds a month, then, then you get that and invest the profits in a bigger niche and kind of just eventually Work your way up. I mean, that, that's the way I did it. I don't think there's any set amount. We've we've registered domains from fresh for seven or eight dollars, and they they earn quite well. Uh, it's all about how well you can find a niche. Um, this same gentleman asked about your brother's time and money. 
you said your brother got started in business as well. You know, uh, sorry, what question did he ask about my brother? <laughs> he asked how much time and was... money your brother spent getting getting started. Ah, uh, um, well, I'm not too sure. I think he um, he's actually looking at me at the moment. Uh, about a hundred pounds, I'd assume. Um, um, he, uh, yeah, naturally he had it because he he actually works for uh, rights in the media as well. So he had quite a lot of knowledge when it came to it. He knew what type of niches were earning money, um, and he wanted to set up a personal site to to go with it. Um, I'd say he invested about a hundred pounds on the domain, and he probably puts about fifty to sixty pounds into SEO. Um, and he's had months where I I know for a fact he's earned three or four grand plus. Um, most months it's three, four hundred pounds, which is still a very, very, very good return. However, he, as with anything in the gambling industry, you can have monster months. Um, so hey, I, I definitely recommend it. I mean, that one hundred pound investment and that fifty pound a month that that took him to Vegas in the summer. So it's it's worth doing. Well, he paid for a trip to Vegas, and he must be yep. doing pretty well. <laughs> okay, are membership sites a good way to promote iGaming offers? Um, I've had not too much experience in this. I mean, it, I'm assuming by a membership site they mean kind of a forum, or uh, do they mean? Uh, I'll assume they're talking about a forum. Um, in which case, I yes. To. I mean, so yeah, some of the most successful affiliates out there, like Ask Gamblers and Latest Casino Bonuses, um, they do both quite well for Castle, and they've they've got forums. It's it's a way to engage with the community. It's a way to get people back. Um, I mean, if you, if you, I, I would say that we're looking to launch that type of community on, on roulette.co.uk at the moment, and it's it's very, very good, and you can earn a lot of money from it if you do it well. Um, if you have a forum there and it's got four posts and there's no engagement, people post and you don't write back, then they're not going to come back, and it defeats the point in having it. Uh, if anything, it gives a negative image because it looks like your site's bare. It looks like that no one really uses it. It's not an authority anymore. Um, I'd say it's it's very successful if you do it properly. Don't just start one for the sake of it. Make sure that if you're going to do it, that that you do it well. Okay. Um, Dave, what is your take on paid backlinks? Do you use them? If so, how big is it in terms of your overall backlink portfolio? Um, I love paid backlinks. Um, I I think every backlink, in a way, every good backlink, is is paid. Um, you do get natural links along the way. It's a lot easier as a as a casino to be able to get that type of thing. However, as an affiliate, people people won't link to you. They're linked directly to the casino, even if you mention some news yourself. Um, there's there's things you can do, such as infographics, stuff which are quite buzzing around at the moment, to get some good 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 free links. However, um, the majority of stuff. Even press releasing and whatnot, if you pay, you get a service which is 10 times better. Um, if we're talking about actually buying links directly from websites, um, from other affiliates, which which we do, in order to promote them, uh, I don't think there's any harm in it, providing you do it well. Uh, don't buy from a site which is linking to 30 other people on the same page. Uh, make sure that you, instead of spending $10 on a link and buying 10 of them, I'll always spend $100 and buy one of them. It might not seem like good business because you're not getting as much, but the the truth is you're you're reducing your risk, and you're also in the long term you're 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 still going to be there. Uh, I also think that if you invest in quality, that you'll it, it will always prevail. So in answer to that question, Michaela, I think there's no problem with it whatsoever, uh, providing you don't go buying links from absolutely everyone. Just be selective. Okay, I think answered that one pretty well. Um, Dave, what are your thoughts on trying multiple niches directed through one major affiliate site? Okay, um, I'll assume you're talking about um, kind of. I think they're saying if you have one site and you offer casino there, bingo. Yeah, over. yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, personally, we we do have sites like that, and um, they they do do something. They they make a bit of revenue. However. It's never as targeted as a site which is specifically for that reason. Um, you can do it. Some people, once again, they do it. They do it excellently. However, I'll always prefer to have a site which is in live roulette 
a site which is in like blackjack, a site which is in roulette because it's it's so targeted. People can get to the site and you know exactly what to serve them. If you it also it it costs too much um, to have one massive site. Um, you've got content, you've got SEO, it's all the maintenance going into that. If you can have ten little sites or one major site, I'd always go for the ten little sites. Okay. Um, I have a couple more questions here. Dave, what do you think are the three most important things that a small affiliate can do to kickstart their gambling affiliate business? Um, I'd say one, and I don't want to keep referring back to this, but it's it's what got me here is finding a niche. Um, you've you've got to be in the right market to start with. If if you're not, you're you're always fighting a losing battle. There, there's no point looking at any other points or, or building an excellent website if you're not in the right area. Uh, the second thing I'll say, especially to be a, a good long running affiliate, is is choose your partners well. Um, I've learned over the years that if you if you're too flimsy with it and you you let blah blah casino in, um, the chances are that you won't be earning lifetime revenue because in a year's time they won't be there. Uh, they'll simply burn you for your money and you'll end up losing out on money you could have sent to a reliable casino. Make sure that you choose your partner as well. Make sure you do it for the long term. Um, I'd say the next big tip, and once again, I've, I've been referring back to this quite a few times, but read up on SEO, uh, especially in the gambling industry. There's so much articles out there which focus on it. Um, make sure that when, you, when you're doing your SEO, you, you target your niche. It's it's kind of weird because everything you do will all tie in together and it will always refer back to the niche. Uh, is the you've got to have the content for the niche. You've got to target the right keywords for the niche. You've got to be on this site because they they talk about that niche. You need to promote these casinos because they're they're prominent in that niche. But focus on on everything I've talked about in the slides. But the, the most important thing which which you'll need to look into, but I personally spend all my time doing is is looking at niches, looking at the, the small ways to get a big profit rather than looking at the, the big way and just losing because it's too competitive. Okay, great. Uh, one last question uh, about your business. Is, is Castle Casino... No. Did you have one? Uh, sorry, Michaela, I, I lost sound there. It just went fuzzy. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, is Castle Casino Asian user friendly? Uh, Asian user friendly was that? Yes. Yes. Um, yes, it is. Um, I'm not. It's not actually converted into a Asian language at the moment. Um, however, one of the major things which we're undergoing and one of the reasons why there's several international staff members which are joining up is because we're, we're targeting new areas like that. Uh, at the moment, we, we have a, a huge player, player base in Asia, however, it's promote, primarily sorry English-speaking countries. Okay, great. I think that wraps up our webinar and our question and answer portion. Thank you to our audience for asking such great questions to change. Um, I'd like to reveal the winner now, who was chosen at random from all of the registrants. Um, the winner will get a free 30-minute consultation with Dave, um, who can help you just answer any questions that you have about getting started. And the winner is Paul Hoffman. And I'm going to send an email to both you and Dave so you can get together to schedule your consultation on your own. But um, Dave, thanks so much for joining us today. No problem. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys, content. and uh, I hope everyone got something from it. I think so. Um, just to remind everyone, a couple of people had asked, this recording will be available on the CAP website within the next few days, uh, so please be sure to come back to the site and check it out. You'll be able to view the webinar in its entirety. So thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your days or evenings. Thanks again, Dave, too. Thank you. Take care, everybody.